Well, Mark Carlotto is an engineer. He's a scientist, an author with 40 years of experience in satellite imaging, remote sensing, image processing, and pattern recognition. He's also written over 100 technical papers, as well as eight books, but it's his last two books that must uh, be must reading for everyone. His most recent, Not of This World, an emerging picture of the UFO phenomenon, and a book released in 2018, Before Atlantis, new evidence suggesting the existence of a previous technological civilization on Earth. Mark is joining us today, and we're talking about his latest book, Not of This World. Hi, Mark. Dean, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. I mean, I, I just spoke about the last two books you've written. I just find them absolutely fascinating. Uh, and uh, the one in 2018, I think what, we, what I'm hoping to do, maybe do a separate interview on that, because that on, on its own is just, um, it's just dynamite to, uh, to talk about before Atlantis. But uh, not of this world is equally as fascinating. And uh, you're certainly a, a guru, I guess, of, of studying anomalous phenomena. So when did you actually take an interest? Well, it was the face on Mars that got me started in the mid 80s. I saw it, uh, an article in the newspaper and something just sort of shifted. <laughs> I think mm -hmm. I, I think I got bit back then and it's been with me ever since. Yeah. Did you uh, did you start all this with a uh, with a skeptic attitude? I'm, I'm really I'm not a I'm not really a good UFO investigator, or at least the classic type, which is very skeptical. Uh, I tend to accept the data as as is and then, then I try to understand it. Um, so I, I never was really uh, although I you know, some of my early work was in trying to determine whether some of the photos, the Gulf Breeze photos in particular back in the uh, 90s were, were faked. Uh, it's really not my thing. I tend to be, you know, assume that that's a legitimate phenomenon out there. And I try to, you know, use my tools, my toolbox to understand it. Mm. Well, your book uh, covers a lot of cases that you've looked at. Um, you mentioned the face on Mars, but to which, which ones did you find the most fascinating? So. Um, from the face on Mars, I, I, uh, I didn't you know, deliberately get into UFO investigation. Uh, Bruce McAbee asked me to take a look at some photos from Gulf Breeze, Florida back in the late 80s. And uh, I did a little work there and I kind of uh, did some work. And then I got back into, well, mostly my day job because I, I don't do this full time. Uh, and then a number of years later, Richard Hoagland asked me to take a look at uh, some videos from the space shuttle, uh, STS-48, um, which shows some anomalous objects in space. And I got into that for a while, and that's also in the book, uh, as well as the Gulf Breeze analysis that I did. Um, and uh, and I, I, I sort of dabbled in, in space shuttle videos for a while. I analyzed a few others. I, was gonna, I started writing a book, and then you know, ebb and flow of life, uh, I got drawn to other things and I sort of put that away for probably about uh, 25 years until mm. more, most recently. Yeah, um, the book itself, uh, Not of This World, is a, is, a, is a great book for those who love to uh, what, look at, um, I guess, look at statistics and, and numbers. Yeah, there's, uh, you know, I, I, write in, uh, I write up front that, you know, I, I I hope I don't scare too many people away because there is, there is some math in there, but it's it's not it's it's meant to sort of illustrate and explain. Uh, but you can skip over it. But there there are tables and graphs, and there's a lot of pictures. Is I think mm -hmm. uh, close to 100 figures. Yep. And um, I, I tend to prefer figures to doing a lot of talk. If you can't explain things with a couple of uh, good figures, uh, then you know I I, I think. It, at least for, for me, I, I have to have data. I have to, I don't like to speculate. I like to be able to say, this is what I think, and then point to the data. And that's what I try to include in the book. And that's one of the reasons I love the book so much too, because of the, um, of the figures that you included, the, um, the pictures. Um, and I, I think in, in the UFO field, uh, people love to see what's written backed up by an image. Right. I mean, and that's that can be that can be a little hard to do in a book. It's it's really better with video, and and for that reason, actually, I like I did in, in uh, my, some of my other books. Uh, I've started a, a web page and blog where I uh, put videos up and and other information to supplement the book. And um, yeah, maybe we can talk about that a little bit later. But I think the video data, because that's that's really what people are 
are recording now are videos, right? Yeah. Not so much photos. If you know, if you've got your phone running, you're taking you're taking a video, and that is much more informative than a single picture. Yep. Yep. So after after studying all these pictures and looking at all the facts and figures, I mean, what's your verdict? Um, are UFOs real? There's, there's a <laughs> yeah. There's a real phenomenon out there, um, and um, and, and it's, it's complicated. Uh, there's a lot of aspects to it. It's, it's clearly existed for a long time, going back to biblical times. Even before, you know, the Vedas talk about um, uh, events that, you know, that, that um, writers like Von Donegan were uh, quick to, and at the time it made sense to popularize and explain these as ancient astronaut theories, because it was a space age. That's kind of how we thought about things. But when you think about it, you know, uh, references to things happening, you know, thousands and thousands of years ago, um, it, it suggests that that if there is an extraterrestrial race out there, they've been around for a very long time. And if, if that's the case, why, uh, and, and this really gets, this is a big part of the book, I talk about SETI, and I examine the premise behind SETI and what we have discovered and have not discovered. And there's, there's, a, there's an inconsistency between that and the UFO phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And based on that, my conclusion in the book is that extraterrestrials are, are, I should say, UFOs are not extraterrestrial, but there's something else. Yeah. Well, I was going to talk about SETI later on, but I might as well bring it up now. I mean, what, what did you conclude about the work that SETI's done? Do you think they've been manipulated over the years? And if they did discover alien signals, do you think that they would be allowed to share it with the public? Well, this goes back to the Brookings Institution report, and and there's a lot of this, a lot of people have speculated on that, and, and and clearly, you know, we we saw the Navy release these videos, uh, these Tic Tacs, back uh, in 2020, and uh, so there there is some disclosure going on. So there. There clearly is some uh, acceptance of, of uh, you know, our ability to maybe handle, handle the facts. So, you know, I think Brookings was, was really an extreme interpretation of how we could react. And perhaps it became the rationale for how SETI has conducted its research. By that, I mean, if, if you look at classic SETI uh, programs, and it's changed a little bit in the past few years, uh, class, you know, their, their traditional approach has been, let's look either long time ago or far, far away at distant galaxies, nothing too close. In other words, when we discovered possible evidence on Mars, they were quick to say, well, there's no way, you know, it could, could, could have gotten here. And, you know, and they're, they're always quick to dismiss, you know, evidence. Um, they're, the theories are great. Uh, they sound really good, but as soon as you start talking evidence, um, then they get really a little a little nervous, and I, I think it's because any evidence now will begin to affect uh, chip away at the you know currently accepted paradigms, and you know they're they're very much a, uh, they're very much keepers of the existing Western reductionist paradigm, mm -hmm. which is reflected in the whole basis the whole theory theoretical. Um, approach they have towards SETI, which is, you know, the Drake equation, how life um, develops, evolves, and then, you know, develops different technologies. And, um, you know, my, uh, it's not my theory, but, you know, there's a, this uh, principle of mediocrity, which states that we're not exceptional. In a bell curve of civilizations, our civilization is is average. There are civilizations that are more advanced and less advanced. And so given this, this, um, this principle, and this is mainstream thinking, mm -hmm. mind you, the idea then should be, there's going to be all kinds of stuff out there, there's all kinds of civilizations. Some will be like us and will be emitting, emitting radio signals they, because they probably developed cell phones and, you know, our technology like and TV and radio like we did. And so um, they should be out there, but we haven't detected them. So what I do in the book is I kind of question some of these assumptions and I turn the SETI equations around, the Drake equation, and I actually use it to, uh, I think, uh, present an argument 
a quantitative argument for why UFOs are not extraterrestrial. Okay, can you share? Can you share that with us? Yeah. So, um, if so, so think about it. You have uh, the the UFO phenomenon. There's something that we're observing. It, it's uh, reports are are everywhere. It's increasing. It's persisted for thousands of years. Yet we don't have a single radio transmission from from a distant galaxy. Uh, they, you know, there's been countless false alarms. Um, you know, we know the paradigm. It's what you see in, when you watch the movie Contact. It mm -hmm. just hasn't happened that way. Um, so if that's the case, uh, then consider, the, consider how um, our technology, if we're typical, how we've developed. First, we developed uh, physics and uh, capability of, of, of radio and television, and then rockets and space flight. And our information technology is, you know, going up at Moore's law rate. It's, it's just, you know, it's, it's growing, you know, at an incredible rate. Information technology, anything having to do with information, um, DNA sequencing, uh, you know, the number of, 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 of transistors on a chip, you know, memory densities, uh, all that sort of thing. You look at rocket technology, and you know we're talking about uh, you know Artemis and and uh, and Starship. Starship is a chemical rocket. These are all chemical rockets. Mm -hmm. Fifty years after Apollo, we're still talking chemical rockets. Now they've got you know supercomputers and advanced technology, and they have incredible capabilities, but they're not ion or nuclear propulsion means of you know doing interstellar travel. So in a sense, our rocket technology has sort of plateaued out, whereas our information technology has continued to increase. If we're not, if we're typical, then that means there's a lot of uh, civilizations out there that should be communicating, emitting radio waves. So we should be picking up signals, but, uh, but because interstellar, interstellar travel is so hard, because it's harder to make an interstellar spacecraft than a cell phone, uh, there shouldn't be any UFOs or any of this type of phenomenon, but the reverse is the case. There are no signals and there are tons of UFOs. So it's a conflict. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and based on this paradigm, it suggests that, that, uh, that UFOs are not extraterrestrial, that it's a different, it's a different phenomenon. Um, now, I'm not saying that there aren't extraterrestrials or uh, you know, I, I don't want to be categorically, uh, you know, denying this or that, but it, it seems like the evidence suggests that that may not be what's behind the phenomenon, maybe something else. Mm -hmm. And I'm sort of uh, tending towards other other uh, possibilities. Well, pe people would say, well, couldn't couldn't the extraterrestrials be disguising their signals so we don't pick them up? Right. And 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 uh, people have, have suggested that well they, you know they may, maybe they don't they don't use radio maybe it's all you know some uh, some exotic technology or maybe it's uh, mental telepathy or you know psychic and, you know other other uh, modes other modalities like that and that's certainly possible but again going back to the principle of mediocrity there's a whole range of civilizations out there you know. The SETI scientists say there, there are millions of, probably millions of civilizations. So given that, and I know some of them are far away, but some are closer, some are more advanced, some are less advanced, we should have picked up something. Mm -hmm. And think about this, we haven't even picked, we, we haven't even discovered, um, I mean, there's no hard evidence that there are even microbes on Mars. After all these attempts, all of this analysis, there's been no evidence of, of, of anything in terms of, of fossilized life that one would expect. You know, if Mars did have life for, for you know, a billion years or two, we're not seeing anything. I'm not saying it's not there, but it's not, it's not obvious. Um, and life, um, and, and so what I'm suggesting is the prevailing paradigm may be wrong. The way they're thinking about it, the way NASA and SETI is you know, thinking about extraterrestrial life and other civilizations may be fundamentally wrong. Right, right. Um, I, I guess the other, the other major player here, but it's not mainstream, are uh, the contact experiences. And I've, 
I mean, I, I could produce dozens and dozens and dozens of people I've interviewed just in the last 12 months who are contact experiencers who tell, tell me and have told me on air that yes, they've gone up in, in the ships and they've, they've been taken you know, out of our system. Um, so as an argument um, against um, the fact that there isn't any t extraterrestrial life, these people would, would tell you categorically, yes, there is, but their argument I don't, would not be accepted in the mainstream. And that's, that's, that's the problem. Yeah, and, and don't misunderstand me. I, 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 I totally accept uh, these, 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 uh, these reports and these experiences. Uh, I don't believe people are making them up. Um, I just think the phenomenon is more than a physical phenomenon. I, I guess that's kind of where I'm going with this. You know, when they started uh, looking at the Tic Tac data, you know, they're measuring accelerations of thousands of Gs and uh, incredible accelerations and, and, and speeds. And even going back to the, uh, to the shuttle videos, this is probably the most extraordinary thing is like some of the, some of the speeds involved were like way beyond what I expected. And, and so I was a little reticent to, you know, sort of push the hypothesis that these were UFOs. Uh, or anything that we could uh, we could have developed because you know a human occupant would have been crushed in, subject to some of these accelerations. So clearly these vehicles um, and there's a really dramatic case the uh, UFO uh, series of uh, UFO sightings in Jerusalem uh, are quite remarkable and they ex exhibit similar flight characteristics as Tic Tacs. And it's this, and what's common in all these are these tremendous accelerations and there's no physical signature, there's no sonic boom, there's no, there's not a sound. And so this suggests it's not happening in our physical reality. Uh, and the, it's not, it's not a craft. It's not, mm -hmm. a, it's not a spaceship. Um, Jacques Vallée, uh, uh, who's a very famous uh, UFO research, researcher, um, characterize UFOs uh, as, as, as holograms with mass, just the way they move around. It's almost like a projection of something. So I think what's going on is, is, is taking place, but it's not taking place in this physical reality. No, I mean, it, it get, see, we, we, we're starting to kind of talk pretty deep at the moment. And it's getting to a stage where, you know, people's brains can start hurting trying to think of, I think of what we're trying trying to explain here, but um, I mean, could they possibly be interdimensional? Well, yeah. So I, I think, and, and I, I talk about this a little bit in the book. Um, one possibility is is this fifth dimension, this Kaluza Klein uh, five dimensional model of the universe um, that was first proposed uh, in the twenties. I think it was as a means of trying to ex explain or trying to unify the, um, all the different forces in nature. Um, and I think, you know, I think you can look upon it um, as a physics problem. The, the, the fundamental obstacle I see though is, is if we are, you know, we're, if we're limited to five, five, uh, I'm sorry, we're limited to 4D space time, how, how are we gonna experience this fifth dimension? How are we gonna get into it? Um, it's sort of like if, if, you know, you're living on a sheet of paper, how can you possibly know the space that that, pa that sheet of paper exists within? Um, and so I, I, I'm not sure that the approach is totally physics-based and, you know, I'm a meditator and I believe in, uh, in spiritual experiences. And I think that the spiritual realm and the realm of UFOs kind of is, is one and the same. Okay. And I think it's an area, I think that's an area of uh, that it's certainly open to investigation and further research. Well, the CE5 uh, contact experiences, um, Ray Hernandez um, produced a, a massive, massive report after interviewing thousands and thousands of experiences. And, um, and his conclusion is that it's all interrelated uh, spirits, ghosts, orbs, UFOs, uh, whatnot, it's all interrelated. So it kind of backs up what you're saying. Yeah, you know, and, and it's even, you even find this in the Bible. Um, the book of Enoch uh, talks about the watchers and, um, and uh, real, uh, the uh, uh, Vedic texts talk about avatars. 
And these are, these are gods or demigods that uh, they come, come here and they sort of keep things running. Um, sort of like, you know, there was, and, and this is, uh, you know, the, in a uh, Eastern view of the universe, you know, worlds and cycles of, 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 um, of the universe involve creation, sustainment and destruction. And during the sustainment phase, which is where, you know, we're in now, the universe has been created. It hasn't ended yet, but we're somewhere in the middle. That you know, there are, uh, these these gods, these damn gods, uh, avatars are are here to kind of keep things running. And uh, maybe the watchers are literally watching over our nuclear weapons facilities to make sure that we don't do anything stupid. Um, and and so you know, I, I think this is this is certainly one component of it. In the Book of Enoch, they talk about these heavens these different planes of existence and there's heavens and hells and there's spiritual beings and there's blissful states and experiences, but there's also hells. And so, and all these exist in other, uh, it's not up there. It's not down there. It's not on another planet. Mm -hmm. It's, it's somewhere else. And right. perhaps that's in the, that's in a, in a, in a fifth dimension, if you will, in a, in a, in a, in a different dimension. Um, and so, yes, long answer to your question, I think interdimension, interdimensional is the way to go. But exactly what that means, I think, has to be refined. Right. And you talk about the watchers watching us and making sure that we don't, uh, I guess, blow ourselves up. But um, you, also, you also talk about um, previous, um, previous civilizations existing before uh, humans came along. Um, I mean... Did they did they blow themselves up out of existence as well? Are we are we talking about before Atlantis now? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I guess I guess we can we can kind of touch that and tie it in. We could touch it a little bit. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, it was kind of funny when I wrote before Atlantis. Um, I had just uh, done an Ancient Aliens episode. Uh, I was kind of like back after uh, after having checked out for for a while, and and I did something, and and it's like you know so much it's like things really hadn't changed since von donegan it's like it's become this whole industry now of ancient aliens mm -hmm. and i thought you know i'm going to approach this whole um previous civilization thing in a different in a different way and say okay forget about ancient aliens could it could it have been previous species previous um you know earlier uh uh hominid species uh for example denisovans and and um and perhaps other, you know, yet to be discovered subhuman subspecies. And that's kind of my premise to go. And so rather than assume everything with, was ancient aliens, it's like maybe there's just been a continuation, you know, of species on earth that have been disrupted, punctuated by cataclysmic events. And the ones, uh, what I focus on in the book is, is, is pole shifts because it has, the mm -hmm. book is all about looking at alignments and it's, it's uh, more of, a, uh, of an archeological, uh, uh, investigation than anything else. But, um, and so, so that was the tact I took there. And, uh, and so here it's like, okay, I put that assumption aside. Now let's consider the possibility that there is something else. Uh, I don't want to limit it, but I didn't want to limit it to ancient astronauts. It's like, let's, you know, what could it be? And, um, uh, I, I think uh, where, where I'm kind of going is that it's, it's more than ancient astronauts because, um, you know, I, I don't think, they came from um, necessarily from this star or that star. There may, you know, there may be out there, but I think it's. Uh, I think the unknown here is not with a little U. I think with it's with a big U. And I right. think it's like I say in my book. I think reality is, is something completely different from what we think it is. Okay. Let's talk about the um, the soft disclosure apparently going on at the moment. The Tic Tac videos. Um, I mean, we saw four years ago um, the New York Times released that story on those on those Tic Tac videos, and we 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 had others uh, released last year, and um, and and lawmakers want a, a report from the Pentagon by June first on on what what UFO information they've got. I recently heard Marco Rubio kind of um, starting to backtrack a little bit because I'm not sure whether June first is going to be the date that they release anything. And that may even be put back, but I'm not holding my breath. But 
I mean, is this all part of a, um, I think you describe it as a gradualist approach to disclosing what they know? I, I don't think there's, I don't think there's necessarily any plan. Um, I think on the one hand, uh, I, I'm totally open to the idea that they, that UFOs, that technology has been recovered. So there is some physical instrumentality, some component to it, but they haven't been able to figure it out. Because in my cynicism, I, I believe that if they had, it would be, you know, to Toyota would have a, you know, an anti-gravity car. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this technology would be commercialized. It's not. Um, so, um, you know, I, I, I think, I think there's more to it than that. Uh, and I think, you know, I think they've been trying to figure it out. Uh, you know, you, you hear reports of this technology or that te technology, but it never really pans out. You hear, you know, stories about, you know, they're, they're going to re there's going to be this big disclosure never happens. And I, I'm not sure there's any real plan. I think what happened was, and I think, uh, Luis uh, Elizondo, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, did a great mm -hmm. service by, by trying to get these videos, uh, by getting them released, because it's now opened up, um, uh, it, it's, it's sort of like the government's admitted, yeah, this stuff going on that we don't really understand. And it's almost like, you know, we're open, we want some help. That's the way I view it, that, that maybe independent investigators, uh, such as myself, but I think there's, you know, the ones investigating the Tic Tac videos have some incredible uh, credentials and, uh, and skills that they're gonna be able to bring a lot. Uh, and there's already some theories about how these things might operate, physical theories, which is, you know, like I said, I think part of this, I think, uh, you know, the, 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 the big, uh, the, the capital U is still to be investigated. So I think there's other modalities as well, but right. I, I don't think there's been any plan. I think it's, I think it's just kind of evolved. If there's any plan, it's not a human plan. It's 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 the other's plan, if, if yep. that if that makes sense. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. Do you think? I mean, everyone seems to point the finger at the government, but I think there's there's a tier or two beyond the government that are making the decisions here, and and it, it and it could involve the others that you speak about. Yeah, you know, I don't I don't think I don't I don't think the big decision makers or the trilateral commission or you know these other these other groups that, uh, you know, uh, or the, uh, you know, global, um, what's the big concern these days that there's this global, uh, you know, the global state conspiracy mm -hmm. or whatever. I, I, you know, I think, I think the, 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 the organization, it's not, a, it's, I don't think it's an organization. I think it's, 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 uh, it's a level of consciousness that is just beyond, you know, uh, our, 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 day-to-day -day normal state of consciousness that we experience on this planet. Uh, I, I think it's, it, it begins to maybe tie into ex states of consciousness one experience, maybe one begins to experience uh, when they first take drugs, but then as they meditate and they have spiritual experiences, they begin to realize there's, there's, a, there's a bigger reality out there. And I think that's where this comes from. But it's, it's multifaceted, there, there's good and bad and, and um, you know, I, I don't think it. I don't. I don't think they're they're saviors or anything like that. We're it's still very much a human. Um, we're still on our own. We still have to figure things mm -hmm. out our, ourselves to make our own decisions and be discerning and critical. Um, and you know, this is a this is a classic exercise in in, in critical thinking and discerning and using judgment and um, and and uh, and you know, so many other things. Yeah, yeah. What do you find out about NASA's apparent um, attempts to conceal unexplained objects in space? Um, yeah, you know, people, people say that they, you know, block, you know, they've erased objects on the moon. And uh, one of the things I've done is spent a lot of time looking for anomalies on the moon. And, um, and we actually, found, we found a few, uh, I don't know what they are. Um, but you know there are people that say well there's cities on the moon and all this other stuff and you know you don't see them in the pictures because they've been erased um I, I think that'd be really hard to do it's sort of you know it's like if you tell a lie it's really hard to cover it up because you have to keep manufacturing other lies to keep it to keep the lie so i think transparency um 
is the easiest course. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think there's really anything on the surface of the moon. Could there be something below ground? Possibly. I think some of these skylights, these, um, these caverns that they've discovered, um, you know, might, and they've discovered on, on Mars too, these underground spaces uh, could, could possibly contain some artifacts or maybe, maybe there's some UFOs lurking in there, who knows. Um, but I don't think, I, I don't think they're really actively concealing or, or um, altering data. You know, the whole Mars investigation thing, you know, we met with them before they re-imaged the face. Um, uh, Professor Stan McDaniel and I met with, um, with uh, the project manager uh, in Pasadena. It was like the week before they were, they, they were in the era breaking phase and it was like the week before they were in an image the face and we said, you know, we'd like you to, you know, take some pictures. And they said, hey, look, we're, you know, we're going to do our best to do that. And, and they did. And they released this, this image of the face and they enhanced it in a really bizarre way and passed it off as, as just a rock formation. And they, they sort of settled it once and for all in the public's mind. But it turned out that they really hadn't. They, you know, it's like if you, if you tell a lie or you say something uh, first, that's what people remember. And yeah. so after the fact, we did a lot of analysis on not just that image, but others that show the face was still remarkably architectural, that it had symmetrical and, you know, uh, architectural features to it. And, um, but, you know, that's, that was lost. And, and uh, so, yeah, they, they, they know how to play the game for sure. Um, but, you know, what's great is that they don't, totally control the game because the data is out there and people like myself and others can can um, do what they do and come up with alternative hypotheses. And, um, you know, that's that's all we can do right now. And yeah. um, I'm happy that, you know, the Internet has given us that ability to, to do that and to share information. Um, so I don't really care what NASA says. I don't care what the government says with this. You know, it'll be interesting what the UFO report says, but it doesn't change anything fundamentally. Right. I mean, people are picking up stuff with their cell phone that is really hard to explain. On my blog, UFO, I'm sorry, it's called not of this world, UFO.com. Uh, I have a, a little, little study I did of some uh, video taken uh, by a woman in Texas of some really extraordinary uh, uh, optical phenomenon. I don't know what it is that she took with her cell phone. So, so regular cell phone yeah. video. Yeah, sure. It's amazing. It's amazing. amazing. 